Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Disney Real to Real, a deep, deep, deep delve into the Disney animated canon. I'm Wyatt, and up until just yesterday, I did not know that Go Touch Grass is actually gamer slang. <laughs> oh my god. Um, And I'm Rayleigh, um, and... I can't believe you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, like you were literally the first person that ever used that phrase. Like, in really? My presence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But oh, I mean, that's... it makes sense. I'm not really into the streaming thing, so. <laughs> I mean, Go Touch Grass has kind of just become like a ubiquitous internet thing because, you know, have you heard Chronically Online? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that doesn't sound like... That doesn't sound Zoomer enough, honestly. <laughs> well, I mean, saying someone is chronically online means that they need to go touch grass. <laughs> oh. As in, they've been online for t- way too long, so they take things, like, way too seriously. <laughs> oh, and, okay. And don't know how to, like, react like an actual normal human being. <laughs> okay. And okay. go touch grass just basically means go outside and do something. <laughs> yes, don't touch a computer for two seconds. <laughs> but yeah. Oh my god. The show is so educational. <laughs> <laughs> In more ways than one. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, uh, that goes to me asking our next personal Disney question. Yes. Which is, would you consider yourself to be a Disney adult? No, I don't think I'm a Disney adult. No judgment, but... (laughs) I mean, like, in the way that most people see Disney adults, it's like the people who, like, obsess obsessively dress up as, like, Disney characters and then, like, go to Disney World slash Disneyland or any Disney park in character or, like, they... That kind of thing. I'm like, I would never do that. (laughs) Or they spend the rest of their lives at story living. Yeah, it's like they kind of obsess over it. And I'm like, I'm not obsessing over it. I'm hyper fixating on it. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, And also, it's like, it's not like it consumes every waking moment of my life. You know, that's other things in my life. <laughs> yeah. Like you don't persona. Wake, you don't wake up in the morning going, I will do that like once as a joke. Yeah. Like, you know, like I'll lift my dog up and do that, but that's a joke. And it happens like once of every few months. So yeah, I don't, I don't consider, I personally don't consider myself an, an, a Disney adult. Um, do I like Disney? Yes but I am not that level of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> As neurodivergent people, we can say we are not that crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not on the level of uh, neurotypical people with how crazy they can get. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, I don't know. Like most of my my items in this room that I'm recording in right now are Disney based. <laughs> um <laughs> But they're mostly, like, film history books, and uh, I got a few pins, um, and some DVDs and Blu-rays, but, like, aside from whatever I keep on my cell phone, like, there there isn't a lot of Disney in my life outside of these, like, square inches. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I, I feel like maybe I started getting out of, like, the mega Disney adult phase when I was, like, in my mid-teens. <laughs> Because somebody was very, very kind to give me a flash drive full of, like, alt-rock emo music. (laughs) When alt-rock saved you from being a Disney adult. (laughs) (laughs) That should be the title of my my autobiography. (laughs) Alt-rock saved me from the mouse. (laughs) Not for real. Um, but yeah, I, like, I'm I'm just trying to go through my life memories and be like, what are things that I've, things that I've gotten into to get away from Disney? And the first thing I can recall is back when I was in the, 
I want to say the second or the third grade, already the family was tired of me watching Snow White all the time. <laughs> so they advised that I watch a little thing called SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it is more meme-tastic than Snow White, but, like, I <laughs> I think it's more chaotic. The fact uh, that my parents literally wouldn't let me watch Spongebob. <laughs> different worlds. Different worlds. <laughs> Two different worlds. <laughs> um, and I still don't like Spongebob. <laughs> I mean, I think the first three seasons are great, but, like, afterwards I don't know, I'm just a not dip. a fan of, like, gross-out humor. And... That stuff is, like, all over, and I just can't. I can't do it. I mean, maybe from season four onward, but, like... <laughs> I don't... But, but those first three seasons are where the memes come from. <laughs> I don't care. Wow. I mean, like, I don't even like a lot of the memes, except for, like, um... Oh, uh, I don't even... I don't even know the context of... <laughs> But the one where it's like he's like bent over like a like a like almost like a like mimicking like a duck <laughs> and he's oh and it's like yeah mocking. he's being a chicken yeah yeah that one yeah yeah that that's one's a, a little recent funny. one but yeah. yeah and maybe maybe sponge bag i think is what it is yeah that one might be funny but really none of the other ones really get me so wow not even it's a giraffe nah What a time to be alive. <laughs> uh, but let's see. There's other things like Panic at the Disco, obviously. That was like the teenage thing. And then I don't really know if I have anything. Well, I guess old Hollywood. That's another big mm. thing. Um, but that was also kind of like mid-teens. So like I don't really know if I have something... For, like, my young adulthood that has, like, taken <laughs> Disney away. I think it's just because I've become more conscious of, like, how it affects our culture now. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, I'm I'm more conscious of how much they control and, you know, you know, how, like, they own, like, Hulu and shit. <laughs> yeah. They own, like, ABC, you know. Yeah. Like... Yeah. <laughs> It's a small, small world. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Actually, this is this is still off topic from what we should actually be talking about. But hmm. I went to the children's museum for my birthday. Imagine my surprise whenever I go into one of their like space themed rooms, and they start playing music from Epcot. What? And I was like, "Hello." Like, is this, I, I was, this is the children's museum. I, yeah, the in, yeah the Indianapolis Children's Museum, which is one of the best in the world, by the way. So if you're yes, ever in yes, Indiana, yes. you should definitely go to the Indianapolis Children's Museum, even if you're not a child. <laughs> um, I went and it was amazing, and also just it's a good place because they have like sensory um, warnings and stuff um, for neurodivergent people, which is like also very nice. Um, mm-hmm. They have that outside of all of their exhibits, um, but. They they started playing music from Epcot, and I was like, "What the fuck?" I was literally freaking out. I was like, pushing my friends. I was like, "Guys, guys, <laughs> you don't understand. This is music from Epcot. This is from Disney World. This is from Disney World." <laughs> <laughs> and like, I literally, I literally turned to like the employee that was like, there was a like, because there's like a like a circle space, and there was like, it's like yeah. one of those like, um, where like they host like trivia. Um, it was one of those areas, um, and there was an employee, like, right there, and I was like, my man, <laughs> this is from Epcot, right? And he's like, yes, this is from Epcot, and I was like, oh my god. That just... week was the best of your life. It really was. Um... <laughs> because you also went through Expedition Everest. Yes, that was also great. Um, yeah. So I got Disco Yeti and Epcot music, so who's the real winner? <laughs> I know, I know. That means October 9th. Y'all better step it up. (laughs) (laughs) I know I'm turning 24, but like, come on, let's make it a thing. (laughs) Come on. Come on. I mean, this birthday wasn't even a special one. I was just turning 20. (laughs) (laughs) 
But they were still like, it's a great, big, beautiful, beautiful tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> I <laughs> I actually can't ride that ride. <laughs> really? I can't do Carousel of Progress. <laughs> because it's it's part of my like weird animatronic puppet phobia. <laughs> ah. I can't I can't okay. do it. The family looks like they're about to get up and punch me in the face and I can't do it. <laughs> I mean, I even struggle on It's a Small World, so. <laughs> yeah, I actually went on Carousel of Progress for the first time on my last Disney World trip. Oh, jeez. And the the modern day section was by far the weirdest. <laughs> it was weird. Because it's like, oh, we already, we're already there. <laughs> we're already there. We're, but and like... we're already ahead of it. <laughs> like, it's a little... Oh, okay, cool. I can't remember what the dialogue was exactly, but it was just very like, we accept that our daughter spends all of her time on her iPhone. (laughs) Yeah, it's like... Giving off that kind of energy. It was like, okay, guys. Like, why don't you stay chronically online? (laughs) No, like, why don't you just go back to your little Facebook (laughs) and post outdated memes with minions? (laughs) Oh my god. In low res. In low in like in like three sixty P and interact with people who you don't like. <laughs> yes. At all times. At all times. Why are you <laughs> friends with them if you don't like them? <laughs> oh my gosh, you are spilling so much true tea right now. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh my god. But before we go any further about our opinions about the internet, because (laughs) gotta save those for a particular movie, I guess. Yeah. Today we're going to be talking about some international variants of the Snow White tale, which include the stories of Rich Hilda, which was written by Johann Carl August Musau in 1782, The Beautiful Daughter, which is an oral folk tale from West Africa, and The Tale of the Dead Princess and the Seven Knights by Russian poet Alexander Pushkin in 1833. So, I guess, uh, going in, I just gotta ask, I've I've asked this question every time we've introduced a story on the podcast Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, but this is is the first time that you get to answer this question. Whee! So, what are your prior associations with the story of Snow White? Well, I mean, obviously, you got the Disney movie. Yes, um, it's, it's everywhere. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. It's literally everywhere. Um, like, it's basically like the interpretation that people show <laughs> when mm-hmm. like introducing Snow White. Um, so, of course, there's that. Um, but I mean, I also read um, a version from, I believe, Brothers Grimm. Mm-hmm. Um, I read a version from that whenever I was in school. Was it with the Was it with the stepmother or the biological mother? I think it was with the biological mother. Oh, could then be it wrong. was going savage. <laughs> I could be wrong because it has been a while since I've read it, but that's I, I think so. Mm-hmm. And I guess like that was like my main two introductions, I guess, to it. Um, mm-hmm. All three of these were new to me. Yes, um, but I mean. Then again, Snow White was not the one that I, like, fixated on. (laughs) Um, But, I mean, they were still very cool. I liked them. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually the first episode we've done, apart from the Expedition Everest episode, which will be coming out later on because we're still trying to get the commissioned artwork ready. (laughs) Get ready for Disco Yeti, guys. Disco Yeti, baby! It looks great. (laughs) (laughs) Um... But yeah, this, other than that, this is the first one where we're going in and we have no idea how the other person's going to react. <laughs> yeah. Um, but as for me, um, Snow White is basically me. <laughs> I, she's like, so me. She's oh my so gosh. me. Like, it, it's unbelievable. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, I often have these issues with, like, being the fairest in the land. And I'm just like, guys, we can't and, all like, be the queen bee. <laughs> again, you, and you can't even help it. It's not your fault. I know. Why does everyone hate me? It's not. 
<laughs> no, no, but in all, in all seriousness, um, I, I, Snow White has proven to be my favorite story, my favorite Disney movie, which I guess we're going to spoil that for the rankings, but mm-hmm. longtime listeners probably have figured that out by now, so like... <laughs> And I mean, I've known it for years, so... Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> I already knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes. But, um... I don't know. I Honestly, I've really, I've really been trying to unpack why that is. Because when I was younger, it used to be more of an aesthetic thing. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I used to be in the animation, the music, the... the voice... shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but now it's like, because I'm looking at it more thematically these days, I I feel like it comes down to being like, being persecuted for being myself. Mm -hmm. And for me being like a neurodivergent queer man, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of, quite a bit of layering (laughs) going on, going on there. Um, because sometimes, like, I, I'm, I'm going to get a little real here. Um, there was a time when I was in the first grade, and uh, it was really hard for me to, like, control or even understand my autism at the time. So, uh, basically, it'd be things like, you know, if somebody was annoying me, then I would have no qualms with, like, shoving them away or, like, <laughs> being more aggressive than I should have been. Mm-hmm. Um and then I remember one time I had a first grade teacher who I think she wanted me to um, obey some sort of command. I I can't remember exactly what the context was because I was like, you know, four or five. Yeah, you're like a child. so <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. But what I do remember is that I must have said no to whatever she said. Mm-hmm. And this must have been a long time term problem because then she had her teacher's assistant tape my hands to a chair with duct tape (laughs) what yeah (laughs) they just made me sit on my hands oh my god they actually taped your hands yes (laughs) i mean both are awful but like actually taping hands is yes yes oh my god isn't that illegal (laughs) it is very illegal (laughs) Because, like, you're, like, restraining a child. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and I can't remember how long I was like that. Um, I just know that I must have gone back home, told the family about it, and then they got me out of that school two days later. <laughs> As they should. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because, um, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think I received anything that bad ever again. <laughs> Good, because, oh, my God. Yeah, that's and, insane. Yeah, and at the very least, it's like anyone who was employed there while that was going down, they're all gone now. So, like, mm-hmm. I think most of them probably left like fifteen years ago. But like, the the elementary schools around here are doing much better now. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh. <sighs> yeah, but um, yeah, that. I guess I I connect things like that with like you know, the queen persecuting her stepdaughter for being something that she can't control, mm-hmm. you know, and um, how she try how the the girl tries to find these allies who like support her in a way that people so other people can't, mm-hmm. and you know just trying to be nice and kind and. Still waiting for that prince, <laughs> I guess. And then she meets like a bunch of like obviously queer short men. <laughs> How obvious? <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of obvious. <laughs> I actually want to know. I want to know How, where where is that coming from? I don't know. The dwarves just like feel gay. <laughs> <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If if we're going by stereotypes, I could see that with Bashful, certainly. But, like... <laughs> what are you talking about? Grumpy's a gilf. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a misogynist. 
okay, so are a lot of gay people. <laughs> wow. I am kidding. <laughs> I am kidding. I know. That is a joke. <laughs> oh my god. Look, shots look, fired. <laughs> look, he he is one of those misogynists where he would look at someone and he would be like, I don't hate you because you're trans. I hate you because you're a woman. <laughs> That re- that reminds me of this epic um trans and inclusionary misogyny. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh that reminds me of this really great stand up bit. I can't remember the comedian, but he was like, Wouldn't it be so interesting to like live in that world where you can be like like you could be you could be homophobic but also vegan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like be like, You are you are a disease on this unholy planet. Now, now make my carrot juice. <laughs> God, that'd be so funny. I know. I'm sure people like that exist. Probably. But I it'd don't be know. really funny to see it in person. Or maybe you could find a polyamorous nun. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Well, to be fair, I'm pretty sure you're allowed to have romantic relationships if you're a nun, but you can't have sexual ones. No. Unless, unless, unless they're with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> well, I think even then, no. <laughs> I know, I know. So, like, in theory, you could be polyamorous, as in have multiple romantic relationships. Yes. You just can't have sex. <laughs> no, yeah, no. You just can't get down and dirty. <laughs> no. <laughs> can't get down with that dump truck. Um. Oh. <laughs> uh, you just can't have an orgy. That's no, that's no, problem. no. That's that, I feel like yeah, that's a pretty big no, no. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. It's like Snow White. It feels, it it feels weird to say that it feels autobiographical, because of how simple it is. Mm, yeah, it. I mean, it is a very simple story. That's why there's fifteen million different versions of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. It just hits a personal chord with me and. Uh, I think a bit of my research has supported that. So, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that at a, at a later date. So yeah, I guess uh, before we start talking about the stories, I just want to throw down some basic traits of a Snow White story, which were collected by a writer named Sigrid Schmidt in her essay about Snow White in Africa, which are basically like African variants of the Snow White story. Mm -hmm. Uh, You'd be surprised how many variants there are, but... (laughs) There there are a lot. There are a lot. Well, I mean, there's like, there's like a bunch of different tribes in Africa too, so that... Yeah, yeah. That that makes it make sense a little bit more. um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Africa is such a huge continent, um, and the fact that there's so many different tribes that were relatively isolated from each other Um, But, I mean, they still managed to have this almost myth in common. Yeah, yeah. Although I will admit it made it very difficult to compile research for the episode because I was like, there were some things where I was like, are they talking about the tribe? Are they talking about their language? Are they talking about the region that they're from? Yeah, that's what what also gets confusing because, I mean, a lot of, I mean, a lot of the tribes, like the tribe name and the language name are the same. Yeah, um, yeah. Just because, like, it's so small that it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, but then, yeah, sometimes the region name is the same. It's, yeah. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, but um, here are some of the basic traits that she wrote down. Uh, a, a beautiful woman learns that her daughter is more beautiful than she is herself. B, she attempts to eliminate her. She either orders a huntsman to kill her in the woods, but he substitutes an animal's heart and liver as a proof, or she has her chased away, expecting her to be killed. C. The girl lives with a number of men who treat her as their sister. D. The mother learns of her whereabouts, goes herself, or sends a confidant to kill her by making her eat a poisoned object, or by driving a sharp object into her head. E. Her hosts succeed in reviving her from the first poisonings, but fail with the last. F. They place her in a coffin. G. The coffin is transported away. H. The heroine is resuscitated. 
I, she marries, and K, the wicked stepmother is punished. Yeah, that's the plot of Snow White. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but I just felt like I just felt like sharing it because mo- some of these stories it's like they're they are beat for beat mm-hmm. Snow White, but then some of them it's like they kind of add these little things that make it like less um what's the word I want to use? Like um less basic? Mhm. Give it, give it its own little spin. Yeah. Um, and some of them are actually, I think, more interesting than the Grimm's <laughs> and their little story. But, yeah, you know, they, they could only do so much because they were all about preserving the oral traditions of their, yeah, I mean, their motherland. The Grimm's brothers did insane work in, you know, preserving thousands of um, folk tales and also like recording them. And of course, like, I mean, they did a lot of preservation work um, mm-hmm. besides just like the writing. Um, and I mean, you got to give it to them. They did, they did a lot of shit. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I believe there is a man who has been writing up like, re- like recently he's been publishing these translations of their stories. Mm-hmm. His name is uh, Jack Zipes. And he is very much an anti-Disney guy. So... <laughs> And I think that relates to how they have like commercialized these stories and like. Mm-hmm. It, I, actually, I don't know how to describe this. It's like they they make them contemporary to when the movies come out, but then it's like. Well, I guess the best example would be like Snow White's outfit. You mm-hmm. know, because she's got like the the puff sleeves. She's got like the slashes in them that are like teardrop shaped, but then she's also got the stand up collar in the back and like the cute little bow thing and the bobbed hair. So she's like an amalgamation of like medieval meets 1930s America. And I think yeah. that's what he doesn't like. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Which I mean, fair. <laughs> yeah. I'm also not a huge fan of like the. The way the Disney princesses kind of got design aspects from their the time period that the movie was made in rather than the time period that the movie actually takes place in. And the region. Yeah. Um, because region also affects um, dress and hair. But mm-hmm. eh, I'm able to look past it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I I might have a bias like in their favor because like there's just something about them that makes them look more appealing. I don't know because like Snow White, it's just the the outfit feels weird if you make the sleeves go up to like her wrist or something. Um, I don't know. I like historical dress, so you know I like seeing when things are made accurately. Yeah, and it just it looks nice when it's like done right. Yeah, so maybe that just means someone else needs to make that animated movie or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> make it historically accurate. I mean, thankfully, um, a lot of like recent historical like dramas have been doing better about doing correct historical dress. But I mean, it's still an uphill battle because people want flattering waistlines with like modern sensibilities. But it's like, no, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like. Guys, if you're doing a historical thing, they had different historical values of what was hot. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, honeys, but Bridgerton ain't it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, but before we go on that can of worms, <laughs> um, uh, why don't we dive into uh, Rich Hilda? Yes. So, so what were your thoughts? What were my thoughts? <laughs> um, so, I mean, <laughs> this is such a long web page. I have to like scroll. <laughs> it really is, guys. To find like, <laughs> where where the actual start of the story is. <laughs> so, um, well, first of all, all I, I'm just gonna say like outright, all three of the versions, I liked them. Mm-hmm. And this one, um, I would say it ranks 
second. I rank this one second. Okay. Okay. Personally, I could have done with a little less detail. <laughs> yeah, it's it the writing is it's descriptive but it's a bit dry. It's very Tolkien in the fact that like there's a lot of details that I don't need <laughs> that are being yeah. put into this. But um I can still like see that there's a good story in here. Well, were you into the the writing style? It was a little hard for me sometimes to read. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's just the translation or if it's like actually the writing style. Yeah. Also, we should give a shout out to uh, William Thomas Beckford for translating the story. Yes. But, okay. um, but yeah, I don't know if it's a problem with translation, like translating the writing style or if it's just the writing style itself. Mm -hmm. Where it just, it got a little hard to read at some points. There's a lot of semicolons. Yeah. Um, a lot of semicolons. Just again, with like a lot of details where I'm just like, what even is happening right now? <laughs> I'm like, this is, where is this going? <laughs> like, I know this is, in theory, I know this is Snow White, but also I'm like, what? Is, I'm sorry, the Reverend Dominican? What? <laughs> <laughs> what is the what is the reverend dominican who who'd that be no yeah because like okay i'm gonna read one sentence and this is gonna be <laughs> as soon as the reverend dominican had bestowed on the infant his spiritual benediction and was about to take leave the countess begged yet a keepsake for her little daughter some relic an agnes day an amulet or a charm for the colic and heartache what even happened in that sentence <laughs> she was just like hey i want something for my kid <laughs> yeah and then that was like that was like a whole ass run-on sentence <laughs> mm -hmm. and and i'm like okay so the reverend did a little thing and then the countess asked for a keepsake but that took like half a paragraph to say <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> um but otherwise I did like this story. Um and it it was it was a fun read. Um because it is nice to see how um because I believe even at the at the top of the page um it said that this um this version came even before the Brothers Grimm one. Yes, yes, yes. The Grimm's version came out in 1812. Yes. Um, and that was that was cool to know. So yeah. Yeah, this is probably the most religious text we read. <laughs> oh yes, very religious. Um, if the Reverend Dominican did not give it away, <laughs> because that's what he that's what that guy is referred to as. It's the Reverend Dominican. Mm -hmm. Nothing less. <laughs> also, Albertus Magnus, the learned Albertus philosopher. Mag yes. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, I think we can go ahead and say that neither of us are religious. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's that's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, even putting that aside, it was very interesting just to look at it thematically and be like, okay, this is how we perceived purity and like piety <laughs> in like yeah. the the 18th century. I mean, um, that was important back then, so I I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were a lot more freaked out about going to hell back then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then we watched Goddess of Spring, and we were like, oh, the hell looks like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I read Dante's Inferno, and I was like, okay, as long as Virgil's there, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I'm still unfamiliar with that one. <laughs> oh, man. I recommend a, a, re a read or, like, an audiobook at least once. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. You know. It's basically fan fiction. <laughs> Cuz Dante like basically wrote a self-insert fan fiction um and then put all of his favorite authors and poets in it. Um and then all of his favorite authors and poets are like fangirling over him. So <laughs> And he really wants to know what's happening in Italy. He just really wants to know what the political state of Italy is right now. <laughs> because that was written in what? Um oh jeez, when was it written? It was written during, like, a time of, like, very serious, like, civil unrest, and he was, like, exiled from his home. 
Was it in the the 19th century? Um, let me see. If it's around 1830, then they had like the Italian Wars of Independence. So like. Okay. Uh, no, it's 14th century. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Now, Father, you're living in the past. This is the 14th century. <laughs> and again, um, Inferno is part one of three, because the Divine Comedy is three parts. <laughs> Goddamn. There's Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso. Mm-hmm. Um, in my opinion, Inferno and Purgatorio are the best ones, because they have Virgil, Virgil but <laughs> Paradiso does not have Virgil, so... So I'm... I'm Automatic downgrade. <laughs> I mean, it's like... A parody so is him going through heaven. Um, and unfortunately, because Virgil was born before Christ, Virgil does not get to go to heaven. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's Dante's like little thing, is that if you were born before Christ, oopsie, you don't get to go to heaven. So either you're in purgatory or you're in like the first layer of hell. <laughs> Wait, so why is it bad if you're born before Christ? Because then you weren't redeemed. <laughs> Why weren't you redeemed? <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it's his weird interpretation of the Bible. Like, it's Dante's personal thing. Um, and it's, <laughs> this is so off topic. I'm I sorry. Know. But <laughs> it is, it is really funny sometimes to read because like he has some weird interpretations of stuff in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um... Yeah, I guess one of my other big comments is that I think this was our only, like, good girl turned bad story. Mm-hmm. Like, it's... If anything, it's really interesting that this puts the queen-type character in, like, a cultural context. Because it's, mm-hmm. like, she is raised up to be this beautiful, pious young woman... And then her mother dies, and she makes the mistake that all mothers make, which is to <laughs> offer her daughter a this magic mirror that, um, and actually I want to read this aloud because I really like the passage. Mm-hmm. She, she says, um, for all else that look upon it, it has the quality of a common mirror to reflect faithfully the impression it receives, but for you it has received another gift besides to represent everything concerning which you inquire in distinct speaking images, as soon as you repeat the words which this tablet will teach you. Beware of consulting it from idle curiosity, or an inconsiderate wish to know the future consequences of your life. Look up to the wondrous mirror as a respectable friend, whom one avoids troubling with frivolous inquiries, and in whom one finds, in the weightiest transactions of life, a true advisor. Unquote. And actually, this made me think about a really funny plot hole in the Snow White story, (laughs) which is like, and I've heard people raise this a couple of times where it's like, so the queen, does she have the power to know anything and everything about time and space and just chooses to learn about who's hot and who's not? (laughs) Or is that all the mirror can do? (laughs) I mean... That is a good question. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, is the mirror... Is it only able of doing a medieval version of America's Next Top Model? Yes! <laughs> um, or <laughs> can it do other stuff and the queen just refuses to acknowledge the rest of it? <laughs> yes. I mean... I mean, Where's if her... Tyra Banks when you need her? <laughs> <laughs> that mirror should be teaching her how to schmizing. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yas girl work. <laughs> we were all rooting for you. <laughs> oh, what's what's the archaic word for we? Oh. Oh jeez, hold on. God, now now I have okay. to look it up. Okay. I'm I'm looking up. Oh, I think it's just we. Is it just we? Yeah, I'm looking at a chart and it lists um first person plural through from subjective to objective to possessive and then present tense verb ending. It listed as we, us, are, and none. Hmm. Interesting. Indeed. Again, educational. 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we art. We we art celebrating the. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we did all that research for a really bad joke. <laughs> no, for really. For real. That's the best way to use research. Like, I know. seriously research something and then make a really bad joke that no one will understand. <laughs> yes. Thou art schmizing. <laughs> Take thine power and work it. <laughs> <laughs> Thou art the fairest of thine runway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, I mean, if anything, like, her her incantation at the beginning of the Disney movie, it gives us the best hint as to what it's capable of when it's like, Slave in the magic mirror, come from the farthest space. Through wind and darkness I summon thee. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, I'm pretty sure, like, Disney has canonized that the Magic Mirror can do more. Mm -hmm. um, just because of, like, you know, of course, like, the chant from the movie, but also the um, the Black Cauldron attraction at Tokyo Disneyland. Oh my god, can we, can we not? <laughs> can we have one episode where we don't talk about that? <laughs> if I can um, get through one episode without talking about Panic at the Disco, <laughs> you stop talking about the Cinderella <laughs> Castle Mystery Tour. Look, I love the Cinderella Castle mystery door. And I love I'm, Panic at the Disco, but I'm, here we are. <laughs> I'm so sad that I will never be able to experience the attraction, okay? <laughs> I know. Because they took it away and they replaced it with the actual tour. And I'm like, no! no! <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> but it's fine. But it's I just fine. Brought it up, I just brought it up in the context that I, I, it pretty much shows that, yes, the Magic Mirror can do more shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Plus, there were, um, well, no, there was more than two. There were several television specials that Disney did in the 50s where the Magic Mirror acted as, like, a master of ceremonies for various shows. Mm. And that guy was also quite creepy. <laughs> <laughs> we might get to those at a later episode. We get those, They're just so wild. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think he was actually played by the same guy who voiced Captain Hook in Peter Pan. So, yeah. Oh, nice. Slay. <laughs> yeah. Slay, Mirror. <laughs> Slay. Slay your enemy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Let's see. Anything else? Of course, in this version, uh, it's a big deal that Bianca is a virgin. Yeah. That's I know the religious stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't feel like I had to point that out, but also like religion. So it's a religion thing. So it's a religion thing. It's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although it's funny how that has carried over into other Snow White adaptations, not like the queen being good at any point. It's like Snow White's mm. always been good. And the queen yeah. has always been evil. But I um, guess no one else cared to know her backstory. <laughs> That's how it is with villains. <laughs> yeah. Nobody cares. <laughs> no, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and then, actually, how does the queen get punished? Or, I mean, Rich Hilda. How does she get punished? Uh... Uh, I'm pulling it up. Let's see. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to look for it. I'm I believe also... she was thrown into a dungeon to repent of her sins. Yes. <laughs> but she got blisters from doing something. Oh, it was from dancing because because oh, she put on the red the hot shoes. shoes. Yeah, yeah. She had the shoes. Yeah. And then and then she was thrown in the dungeon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was like, didn't she? Didn't she dance? <laughs> yeah, she did. But yeah, it was because it was because she had the the red hot shoes. Yeah. Yeah. And while we're at it, did Bianca order her to put those on, or? Uh... Because it was they they were made by the blacksmith dwarfs. Yeah. 
And then the knight of the tomb addressed a sermon to her of which every word cut her to the soul. <laughs> okay, so one of the dwarves put the shoes on her. Okay. Gun 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 Gunzelin. Gunzelin, yeah. Gunzelin. The stout Gascon knight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he put put the shoes on her. Okay. Okay. And somehow that carried over to the Grimm story? I guess. But then they actually had her die on the dance floor, so like Yeah. Which one which one's better? Dying on the dance floor or being forced to wear burning hot shoes and then being locked away afterwards? I mean, at least she had a physician to like <laughs> It said that um Sam Bull, the physician, quickly boiled a precious salve, which oh. cured the blisters and eased her pain. Wow. So she had help. <laughs> okay, at least she had help. Because I was like, she she probably wouldn't have use of her feet ever again if she was just left with that. But okay, she, they did actually give her a physician, so. Yeah. Interesting. And that probably has something to do with, like, something, something, forgiveness, whatever. <laughs> it's funny how the Grimms didn't think about forgiveness until they, writ <laughs> th they wrote their, like, seventh edition of those stories or something. Oh, they were wild. Also, I just want to talk about the fact that they <laughs> they had to specify that Samuel Sample was a Jew. <laughs> they just and had to. They had to. They had to specify. This guy is not Christian. <laughs> He's Jewish. <laughs> Actually. Or is this one written with Jewish intent? I don't know, but it says at the end that he, uh, what did it say? It says, he stands exalted, exalted. like yeah. a cedar of the house of Israel. Of Israel. Yeah. And in, in the character of prime minister? Does that mean he's a prime minister? Or and is he just, or just giving off prime minister vibes? I think it's just like, he's like noble. Okay. Like a, like a prime minister should be. Mm-hmm. So like he just has like good he has good vibes. That's what they're Yeah, he's saying. got good vibes. He's got good vibes. Okay. He's just he's just a good guy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like we don't have a lot of like personal thematic attachment to this story, but like mm -hmm. it's just a good like building block for what the Grimms would come up with. Mm-hmm. Um also, I, I think before we move on, I should just recite the couplet hmm. that everyone misquotes from later adaptations. But for this one, it was, um, Mirror, let they burnished face, give me instant here to trace the fairest maid of Brabant's race. Unquote. Nice. Because apparently this one was also, like, geographically detailed for some reason. But Yeah. All right. <laughs> they really wanted you to know where this one took place. <laughs> yes, they did. They wanted to make it clear. And then the hobbits who were underground fashioning there. <sighs> Don't even bring up Lord of the Rings right now, man. Because <laughs> I'll start comparing it. Uh... <laughs> I know, but Snow White's the easiest one to compare them with. <laughs> I know. Also, also, he hated Disney Snow White. Yeah. Also, is it Bianca or is it Blanca? I swear it said Bianca in one section. Because, I, I mean, every time I look, it's Blanca. Blanca. Unless they just capitalized uh, the I. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing a Blanca. I'm seeing a Blanca. Yeah. I think it's right. Blanca. Oh, then I'm sorry. I've been mispronouncing her name. I'm well, going it's... to be canceled. Like... <laughs> I mean, it's okay because, like, I mean, I just kind of noticed it. Yeah. Good good one on you. Yes. Um sorry everyone. It is Blanca. <laughs> Cuz I mean like I don't like whenever I read stuff, I don't like I don't read in my head if that makes sense. Like I don't say things in my head as I'm reading. Um so but like you also I just don't kind say of, it out loud. Yeah. So I just 
I don't pay attention to how things are actually pronounced, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I just, I didn't really realize until you said Bianca. I was like, wait, that kind of looks like Blanca. (laughs) Well, does does this mean I have to get into like a Google dive about the significance of the name Bianca (laughs) or Blanca? No, it's fine. I was just I mean, I would. I would. I I wasn't wasn't being a smart ass, but. But uh, we don't have to get that. Uh, Look, I'm smart enough to not call your bluff. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So then before we get more into useless details, uh, we can move on to the beautiful daughter. Yes. Um, so for this one, I, re- I wrote the most questions. <laughs> Uh-huh. But I think this first one is a worthwhile one to bring up, which is, um, what do you think are the benefits of a non-European Snow White? Um, Either as a story or a character. Um... Honestly, um, that's making me critically think again. <laughs> yada yada um, yada! It's the motherfucking eagle, double G, Snoop Dogg. Dog. <laughs> what's like? What's the benefit of having a non-European Snow White? Yeah, I mean, part of it is like the fact that, um, I mean, for. I mean, even still somewhat to this day, um, non-European people still face, like, a lot of criticism for their appearance, um, because, like, European beauty standards have become so common, um, that, like, it overrides what used, like, what used to be, like, cultural beauty standards, especially with, like, um, I mean, the easiest example is, like, Middle Eastern noses, where, like, they have, like, a more, like, pronounced bridge of their nose, rather than, like, um, like, with, like, white people, there's, like, a more pronounced, like, button nose, um, Mm -hmm. and then also, there's the whole debate with, um, black hair, where, um, it's deemed, like, unprofessional to have, like, your natural hair, but also it's also deemed unprofessional to like have it braided properly in a protective style. So to have this story about someone who, you know, is so kind and obviously like the most beautiful person ever, um, to have them be a non-white person is honestly like really cool. Um, and honestly just, I feel like it would be, it'd be better (laughs) in my opinion. Um, to have this kind of representation. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm kind of coming from. Yeah. I was thinking that um, the really, really funny thing, <clears throat> well, I guess it's not really funny, but <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that um, the European versions of the, of Snow White, especially the Grimm's version, mm-hmm. race matters to those stories in a way that it doesn't for like African texts. Mm. So I, I, for this, I did, I read a uh, two variants of the story mm-hmm. and neither one of them has the queen character get angry at snow white for, for being the fairest of them all. True. It's for, yeah. it's for being just beautiful. Mm hmm. And I, and I know that that can be, like, open to interpretation, because fairest can also use, be used to describe, like, a beautiful person. But because of, you know, shitty European <laughs> standards, mm-hmm. um, I do feel like it also extends to her being a fair-skinned woman. Yeah, that's that's, like, another thing that I was coming from, where it's like, yeah... Because, I mean, the whole thing with Snow White is that she has, like, skin white as snow. Yeah. And, like, lips red as, what was it, a rose? <laughs> yep. Yeah. And, and hair, then, like, hair black, black as is ebony. Ebony, yeah. 
as of her mother's embroidery frame. Yeah. So it's like, uh, do we really want to be saying that the fairest person is skin white as snow? Are we sure she isn't Casper the ghost? <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I don't think she, I don't think she should be that pale. <laughs> That sounds unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want your daughter to live to be 19 years old. <laughs> so she can have a couple of children and maybe one will live to adulthood. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're past the plague by this point, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, royal families were all inbreds anyway, so. Yeah. Especially the Habsburgs. <laughs> yeah, it be like that sometimes. <laughs> and Snow White took place in Germany, so the Habsburgs were definitely there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think and this I think this might be a drawback of a non European Snow White, mm -hmm. but I didn't really feel like aside from the use of the magic mirror. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like any of these stories could be considered, like, fantasy stories. I definitely agree. Like, they have... They're much more grounded in reality. Yeah. <laughs> than the other ones are. Yeah, which is partly what inspired me to want to talk about these, but also, like... I could say that is one good reason why we constantly talk about the Grimm's and Disney. It's because they ground it in a more fantastical world. Yeah. Um, and even like, I think that that might be one of the reasons why people don't like the Disney Snow White so much. It's because mm -hmm. like, you have all these fantasy creatures and these archetypes of like princes and princesses. Mm -hmm. They, when they're not going through the fairy tale motions, and then it's like they kind of act like regular people. <laughs> yeah. In the way it's like, I, I'm like, yes, keeping in mind, it, it's very traditional, very 1930s, very Christian, but like, you know, you still be cleaning ha cottages and you still be working in diamond mines and like. <laughs> yeah. The grind, you know, the daily grind. The grind, the grind. <laughs> you know what's up. <laughs> but. um. That's another like gaming term, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm more familiar with that one. Okay, good. Rise and grind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rise and shine. <laughs> Fucking Kardashians. Anyway, um, but yeah, I know that I know that might sound like I'm making a mountain out of a molehill again, but like, <laughs> I I think that goes more with like the Great Depression attitude mm -hmm. that was put onto that movie rather than yeah and like yeah so just wanted to keep that in mind yeah yeah so the article we used to read this story it was used as part of a collection of stories that reflected fetishism in west africa and uh just so we get this cleared up um according to the mcclintock and strong biblical encyclopedia fetishism refers to the lowest forms of human worship in which the shapeless stone, the meanest reptile, or any object, however worthless or insignificant, is consecrated by a vague and mysterious reverence. Okay, so how I like tiny cowboy hats. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> because they're so small. So obviously they're the best. Yes. And how I really like cups. <laughs> yeah. Because they supply so much. Although I don't have a shrine devoted to a corksicle or something. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so funny, though. Somebody make that meme, please. <laughs> oh, my hero of stainless steel. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, which brings me to our next question, which is, what do you think is the most important object in the Snow White story? There are a few answers. I mean, the mirror is one of them, or at mm -hmm. least whatever the mirror equivalent is. And then whatever ends up killing Snow White would be my two answers. Mm -hmm. I'd say those are the two big ones, and I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think the mirror actually gets the edge. Yeah, I would, I would give the edge to the mirror, um, because, I mean, it's... <laughs> 
even if unintentionally, it's the one that sets everything into motion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, um, sorry to tell you this, uh, ma'am, but actually you're not the prettiest. Yeah. It's like, turns no. out that, like, it turns <laughs> out that, like, Venus and Jupiter and I were all having a conversation about mm-hmm. who's the hottest person on planet Earth. And, uh, you weren't in it, so, like. Yeah. So you can't sit with us. I mean, it's like, you were like, you were like second place, so. Yeah. I mean, you killed the rest, so like, good on you, but like. Yeah, but like, you're still second place, so. The first loser, if you will. (laughs) The first loser. (laughs) You're on the podium, but you also lost. (laughs) Yeah, like, so just like, be happy that you're here, so like. (laughs) Yeah. Um. Yeah, and it that kind of goes into the the notion of like perhaps the greatest theme in the Snow White story has to deal with like envy. Yeah. And how like we might have a lot of good things going for us, but there's still that one thing that we can't quite like, <laughs> grasp and we resent anyone else who has it. And I think where it gets into like fairy tale territory is when we want to like kill that person. Yeah. That's all fairy tales are, just fantasizing about killing people. <laughs> <laughs> In increasingly gruesome ways. Yeah. Oh my god, freaking Cinderella. She gets married and her bird friends peck out her stepsister's yeah, eyes. Yeah, they peck out their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. One of my nightmares, honestly. Yeah. I hate that somebody did fan art of the, the Disney films if they ended the way the fairy tales do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. I appreciate the accuracy, but they were all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, although, interestingly, going back into Disney Parks territory, um... There is the Enchanted Storybook Castle at Shanghai Disneyland, um, which is supposed to be themed like the various Disney princesses, but it has a special focus on Snow White. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that a lot of the, what's the, like symbology, is that the word? (laughs) Maybe. It's it's like when you see like banners or paintings on walls. Symbolic nature? Symbol, sure. Um, <laughs> whenever you see anything there in symbolic nature that like, <laughs> that, like represents Snow White, mm-hmm. they use they also use a dove symbol mm. to represent her innocence, which makes sense. Yeah, because I mean, doves are one of those birds that kind of has been given that kind of metaphoric meaning mm-hmm. um, to like represent innocence or something pure because i mean doves are also used in reference to marriage Mm -hmm. um, because it's one of those things that's like pure i guess (laughs) then in that case then oh how fitting they were there when she made that wish into the well for the prince (laughs) Mm -hmm. that's how you know she wants a ring on that finger (laughs) yeah yeah i'm wishing i'm wishing you know (laughs) yeah I'm wishing and I'm wishing for us to get married so then I can get get down on it. <laughs> okay, but she's also like 14, so I know, I know, and that's the one thing that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I she, acknowledge that. She wants to get married to have a companion because she's lonely. Yes. Like, yes, that is more on point. That is more on point. Yeah. She is very isolated and it is very fair that she wants to like have a friend and a companion. Yes. Absolutely. So, what did you think about the beautiful daughter? So, this one had, like, the opposite thing of <laughs> the first one, where it didn't go into nearly as much detail, which I mm-hmm. I kind of appreciated. <laughs> um, I did not need all of the extra fluff that the other one had. Um, but at the same time, it almost goes in, like, the opposite direction, where there's, like, too little now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> It's very much like this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens. And there's like not a lot of bridging in between, <laughs> um, except for like the bare minimum. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I believe the writer, he actually made a note about that at the beginning of the page. He was like, Yeah. He was like, African narrators use very short sentences, and one of their daily recognized idioms finds its exact parallel in the speech of our own children. Listen mm. to a civilized child's animated account of some act. They repeat, the native does so constantly. He is not satisfied in telling the narrative of a journey by saying curtly, I went. His form is, I went, went, there, there, etc. His dramatic acting keeps up the interest of the audience in the twice-told tale. Yeah, that makes sense. Because this really does feel like something that would be better spoken and acted out than yeah. something just to read. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, it is very much... <laughs> That's that's literally what it is. It's she went here, this happened, this happened, this happened. Person came, this happened, this happened. Um mm -hmm. and um it's all very matter of fact too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very matter of fact. Um there's like no I don't want to say there's like no um subtext, but it's mm -hmm. like there's no like readily available like metaphor or like anything more than just like what is what is literally happening <laughs> yeah it's just text <laughs> yeah um but i mean i still liked it um but because of like how bare bones it is or like how bare bones it feels without hearing it and like seeing it being like animated um mm -hmm. That's why it goes in third. <laughs> oh, it goes me. in third. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't rank them, but <laughs> I ranked them. I I appreciate that someone kept metrics around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. This one, it's interesting because I I think the characters communicate better with each other. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely. Um, like, we literally have a moment where the mom gets mad at her daughter or stepdaughter for going into her room where the mirror is and being like, I'm mad because you are more beautiful than me. <laughs> <laughs> like, who talks like that? <laughs> Unless you've, like, gone to therapy and have, like, learned how to, like, <laughs> verbalize what upsets you. <laughs> Nobody talks like that. <laughs> Like, I mean, I know that I can go and be like, you know, hey, you saying this really upset me, but that only happened because I went to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and because I learned that it's okay to say, hey, I'm actually, like, not okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. This mother-daughter pair, they just... <laughs> They need a they need a counselor. <laughs> mm -hmm. They need family counseling and individual counseling. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Also, it's really interesting that as soon as the mirror spots the daughter, then he's like, You are the fairest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead of being like, I know across time and space. <laughs> yeah. I know. Minute details, but interesting. Um then they kill some dogs. The hunters kill some dogs instead of a wild pig <laughs> to deceive the queen. Mm -hmm. uh, rough times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sad about the dogs. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. Why? Why is it in two of the three Snow White adaptations they have to hurt the fucking dogs? <laughs> Why'd they do that? <laughs> Oh my god. Because that's all they had around. <laughs> they had... Look, they had more than dogs. They could have I mean, killed, a, killed a mouse or something. <laughs> I mean, could've, I guess... the could have killed a boar. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 the Grimms do that. Um, and I think... Is not it? Is it true that pig's hearts are closest to humans? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can get it like a, an implant... Of a pig's, like, heart, I think. And still, like, function as a normal human. Interesting. Yeah. Is it, Does it matter if it's, like, a... Um... Oh, fuck. 
I mean, obviously, like, it'd have to be a certain size. And a certain size, be, yes, but also, um, like, is it, like, a naturally bred pig, or is it, like, ones that we deliberately um, use to, like, get fat? <laughs> I, I think it has to be, like, I mean, it has to be, like, a special pig, I think. Um, One special pig. But, I mean, it's still, like, a, a marvel, the fact that, you know, there is, like, naturally occurring pigs that <laughs> you can get a heart implant from. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, they found it out because, like, they, you know, opened up pigs and were like, whoa, those are really close to human hearts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moment of silence. <laughs> Moment of silence for all the pigs. For all the pigs. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then, um, again, another minute detail, I know, but like, the seven dwarfs in this story are actually robbers? Yeah. And that doesn't seem to have a massive impact on the plot. <laughs> I mean, honestly, what the dwarves do isn't that big of a deal. <laughs> it's not. It's really not a big deal until Disney comes along. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it really doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. They can do whatever, like whatever. Yeah. And because like it because like either way, Snow White does not involve herself in what they're doing. So like no. it just doesn't matter. <laughs> no, but it's just interesting because. I don't think it's until the, the Disney version that they really set up why that's important. Because again, keeping the context in mind, 1930s, you know, but in the other versions, it's just so like... It's like one sentence that's like dedicated to what they do. <laughs> one sentence and also like, it's just her way of... Paying her rent, I guess. Yeah. Whereas in the Disney movie, it's like, she's like, oh my god, I am on the run. I need I need to do something. Maybe if I keep this house clean, then like, <laughs> like it's kind I of mean, a trade-off. I mean, at, um, at first in the Disney movie, doesn't she think the house is abandoned because it's so messy? <laughs> yeah, and she thinks it belongs to children. Oh yeah, or children, yeah. Orphans, yeah. And then in um, what did what did she think in the the first one? I can't pronounce anything for shit. Um, <laughs> I don't know if she did. I don't know if I don't even know if she left the castle. Huh. I I just know that she was getting to be with Godfrey of Arden. <laughs> yeah. Whoever the hell that is. Whoever that is, again, there's so much like extra information in R Rich Child, R Rich Rich Hilda, Rich Hilda, that like <laughs> everything just blurs together. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's really not until the Disney movie that what those guys do matters. Yeah, <gasps> it's kind of like um, Mrs. Banks and Mary Poppins being a <laughs> suffragette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, thematically, we just give these people jobs or causes so that the protagonist can get their shit done. <laughs> In that case, Mary Poppins. Mm -hmm. But, um... Our daughters, daughters, will, will adore, adore us and they they'll sing in great for chorus. Well done, sister suffragette. <laughs> <laughs> I still have like that whole song memorized. So do I. <laughs> it's it's a goodie. <laughs> Take heart from Mrs. Pankhurst has been clapped in irons again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what um didn't at some point didn't they throw eggs at the prime minister? <laughs> That's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> We're all going to gather outside of the 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 building to throw things at the prime minister. <laughs> Oh god, that's like so funny. <laughs> I, I must hurry. Our gallant ladies in prison are waiting for me to lead them in song. <laughs> Honestly, Mrs. Banks is such a queen for that. I know. I mean, it sucks that she's still like within the confines of like having to be a loyal wife. Um, yeah. 
and having yeah. to like hide that part of her from her husband because she knows he'd be upset. Yes. But she kills it. Um <laughs> she does. She really does. Oh, I'm just about to get ready for a rally in Hampstead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. She's the best dits. <laughs> she is. Um I'll treat her right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um And then I guess the final thing I want to talk about with this one is that um the girl is frequently revived in and out of her slumber because she has like a nail yeah wedged into her head but it's then like acupuncture <laughs> kind of <laughs> it's like really then, violent acupuncture <laughs> yeah well because the queen she has this old lady friend who is like she tells her to go to go to where she's hiding and kill her mm-hmm. because i think this queen she might be the most passive yeah like, she gets because someone she, she always gets someone else to do her dirty work yeah, but I mean, like, Richilda, didn't she kill Blanca herself? I'm pretty sure. And then the lady in our next story, she killed... She she killed her herself. Yeah, so then this one, it's like she she explicitly tells her, I hate you because you're more beautiful than me. But mm-hmm. then she sends other people to do her dirty work. But then she's work. so conflict avoidant that she sends other people <laughs> to, do yeah. her, to do her dirty work. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> Like, way to be emotionally healthy, but, like... Yeah, way to be, like, in touch with your emotions, but super conflict-avoidant to the point yeah. of fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, and then there's one point where um, these two men named Ezrengila and Agula, um, they show up and they check out the casket. Yes. But then Agula has this daughter who, like finds the girl and she like removes the ne- the nail from her head but then there's one point where like what is what is what does the girl say oh no where is it it was right here she said she said something about how like she was feeling very tired and so the girl put the nail back in her head <laughs> i was like what what is happening oh yeah <laughs> It is better that you put back the nail and let me sleep again. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, that's so funny. Yeah, it was then the beautiful one was tired, and she said, it is better that you put back the nail and let me sleep again. <laughs> Literally, Whenever what? her father went out, she at once would go to the room, draw out the lid, and pull out the nail. Her friend would sit up, and they would play and repeat their friendship. <laughs> Agula's daughter- so funny. Seeing that her friend's desire for sleep was weakness for want of food, daily brought her food, and the girl grew strong and well and happy. <laughs> yeah, she was so tired because she was malnutritioned. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. But then she's cool with being put back out. <laughs> no, for real. God, that's weird. Um. <laughs> but then it's even weirder because then her father, Agula finds out the truth um, and then decides to have her for his wife. Mm. (laughs) And I don't know how old she's supposed to be. Like the story doesn't specify that at all. I'm just going to choose to assume that she is of good age. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Because I don't like the implications otherwise. (laughs) Yeah, no. No, ma'am. Um... And then, uh, oh yeah, I forgot the stepmother in this one has a name. It's, uh, Maria. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Maria. So they, they call up Maria and the old lady and they're like, hey, your girl here told us what you did. But then they just run off to a far country and never return. <laughs> yeah. So they just go someplace else in Africa and <laughs> it's like, okay cool (laughs) yeah uh oh and then i forgot the worst part the robbers in their secret house yeah they kept on mourning and grieving for their lost sister not knowing where she had gone or what had become of her 
And so the story ends. Yeah, that's so <laughs> that's so sad. Yep. Like, come on, just just tell him that she's alive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. Like, they've got no closure. <laughs> yeah. And also, I'll just bring up the there's the another variant called the Favored Daughter, <laughs> which is from the Batanga and Mapongwe t- tribes of Cameroon and Gabon. Um, they have another girl named Yambe, who is never awoken. Huh. Like I think she's actually killed by a bird. Oh jeez. And they mourn her, like they put her in a coffin, but she never wakes up again. <laughs> Ouchie. <laughs> yeah, so it's like... Say whatever you want about the beautiful daughter, but at least it has a happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my lord. Um. Alright. And then finally, we can move on to the tale of the dead princess and the seven knights. Yes. So, for starters, I should say that this originated as a poem... Mm -hmm. Uh, a short poem but because we didn't have like immediate access to that uh we found this uh interesting animated film that was produced under the soviet union by director ivan ivana vano in 1951 it's quite it's quite a lot of (laughs) ivans yeah it's very ivani so i liked this one actually um it's my number one of the three It, it was a little goofy at times um, mm-hmm. especially, especially when the prince was riding around being like, oh, sun, oh, moon, oh, wind, where is my bride? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, I don't know, bitch, she's probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, I don't know, God. she's probably dead. Ask an esper- ask, ask someone else. <laughs> yeah, and... Did they have an established relationship before he found her, or was it just like so? I'm, lo- I'm looking I for this so. unknown woman. <laughs> no, like I think they at least knew each other, or like they at least met, because like, um, I think there's a scene where like they're together, and plus, like she already knew that she was engaged to him, because get this, um, the seven knights, um, they actually come to her and they're like, hey, we all love you like yeah, romantically yeah. yeah and we just we would like one of us to marry you and she's like well i'm already engaged and they're like oh okay thanks for <laughs> hearing us out <laughs> i mean they're like really chill about it actually like yeah they, they are pretty bro <laughs> like when when she rejects them they're just like okay thanks for telling us um we hope that like you know your marriage is good <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. and then they leave <laughs> like they ex- they take it with a lot of grace and that's actually like really cool <laughs> and funny. Yeah. Um what was weird though was that they were like we're your brothers but we want to marry you. <laughs> yeah. I was about to be like this could have been one bride for seven brothers. <laughs> yeah, but it, it they were they ended up being chill. Yeah, have you heard about seven brides for seven brothers? No. Okay, it's an old musical, but I think it involves these men, these mountain men who are all bachelors, and for some reason they decide to go and kidnap some ladies from a nearby town uh, and have them essentially tend to them and their house stuff and whatever. But uh, everything's cool, I guess. They they all, like, form genuine bonds through dance, I guess. (laughs) Um, And one of them's played by Howard Keel. I don't know if you know who he is or not. Not off the top of my head. (laughs) <laughs> okay, he was like he was, he was kind of like an epic baritone okay. in the fifties, so like yeah. Um but that was actually one of Brendan Urie's favorite movies, so <laughs> but uh yeah, there you go. Um It's okay, it's only fair. I brought up <laughs> Mystery Tour. You get to pick yeah. up Panic at the Disco. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> But, but I mean, yeah, the plot of this one is honestly, it's much more, I would, I dare say it's much more recognizable, um, especially compared to the Disney film. Yeah. It was very visually similar. Yes. Um, but I believe they were, were they both, um, 
were they animated the same way? Where did they both use rotoscoping? I don't know. There because, isn't a lot of information about this this film. Yeah, but I mean, based on how it looks, I can tell that it was rotoscoped at least. Um, mm-hmm. Which is just a method of animation using like actual human movement. Um, and uh, I, I I have a feeling a lot of people would say that it looked way better than the Disney Snow White. I dare say I agree with them. Um, <gasps> But I liked the music in the Disney one better. Okay. Does that fix it? Not quite, but... <laughs> I Okay, I, I will say I think they're going for, like, two different things. Yes, I do think they are going for two different things. Um, yeah. And I like... I mean, I liked seeing the, like, traditional Russian dress. That was nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was lovely. Yeah. I don't know. The Seven Knights were just kind of cool. Um, <laughs> they were just a bunch of dude bros. Um, but they were, like, respectful dude bros. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were, like, super chill about who the intruder even was. Like, they were like, yo, if you're an old man, then you're our dad. If you're a young man, then you're our brother. If you're an old woman, then you're our mom. <laughs> and then if you're a young woman, then you're our sister. And, like, they were just, like, super chill about whoever this... <laughs> Yeah. intruder could have been um well the same thing happened in the the beautiful daughter too oh yeah yeah like they didn't they just didn't really care <laughs> yeah they were all like be our sister <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is interesting because like other versions of snow white she's just their housekeeper and then and then on like a metaphorical level like she could be their mom <laughs> Yeah, but these ones, like, they specify that it's, like, um, like a sister-brother bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, it's a, ve- it's a very familial bond. Or like, sibling. Yeah. But, I mean, like, in the Disney Snow White, I think it's, it's fairly, like, explicit that, like, Snow White is mothering those dwarfs. <laughs> yeah, which is a little weird because they just look so old. <laughs> they're so old, and also, like, they're little men, and, like... Just because they're they could be as tall as children does not mean that they should be treated as such. Yeah, no people people who have who like what is it people with dwarf dwarfism or yes, yes yeah people with dwarfism are fully grown adults. They are perfectly capable of taking care of themselves. It's it's a little weird and a little ableist maybe a little bit, but also like I'm I I see that I see that point. I very much see that point, but I also just think of it as just like a cute thing that Snow White does. So. <laughs> Yeah. I'm um, torn about it because she's really cute. So <laughs> Yeah, like I'm I'm also torn about it because like yeah, like it is it is just cute to like watch these interactions, but also people with dwarfism have to deal with that. Yeah. So I guess the best we can do is be like we're aware of that. Mm-hmm. And we know that we wouldn't treat actual people like that, but Yes. Because it's a Snow White story, then it's like Yeah, but at least in this one, um they are not dwarfs. Yes. These yes. are fully grown men. The knights are fully grown men and they are very tall. And I would smash all of them. Yeah. <laughs> I can take them. <laughs> Not in a fight. <laughs> but uh yeah, they were they were they're cool. Um and the dog, love the dog. Love the dog. Also, he got poisoned. I know, he bit the apple. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's why I was like, why do they have to treat the dog so bad? But I mean, he was a G, okay? Because like he tried to scare off the queen, um, or sorry, the Sarista, and then went and like got the brothers, yeah, um, and then showed them what poisoned her, yeah, and then fucking died from the poisoning yeah. <laughs> because he bit the apple. He did as just one creature what those fifty animals did in the Disney version. Exactly, and he was one fucking dog. I know. He was like one collie. <laughs> one collie. And then, yeah, I love that dog. And <laughs> again, with the fucking prince. I mean, it's it's got its own unique spin, you know, with, you know, him having these like little rhymes that he uses to like call out uh-huh. to the sun, the moon, and the wind. Um, but it's also just fucking goofy. I know. And the fact that, like, okay, the sun and the moon. I mean, the sun is just an asshole. He's like, I didn't see shit. <laughs> Ask the moon. 
Ask your mother. <laughs> and then the moon is like, oh, I didn't see anything either. Like, oh, she might have passed whenever it wasn't my turn. Um, you might want to ask your father about that one. <laughs> and then she's like, no, ask your uncle. Ask the wind. <laughs> And then the wind is like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I know where she is. She's fucking dead. <laughs> She's in a cave in a crystal Ooh. coffin. Ooh. <laughs> She's in a crystal coffin. <laughs> and then the prince goes to this fucking, <laughs> this fucking crystal coffin and lifts the lid. And she's there. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, man, she really is dead. And then he goes, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then she wakes up, like, immediately. The thing with this version is that they don't explain how the apple works. <laughs> like, it just kind of appears, and then it poisons her, and she, like, dies. <laughs> yeah, there's no explicit antidote that is known to us, yeah. Yeah, like, it doesn't show, the like, the, the Cerista, like, creating it. Um, she just, she literally just shows up with it. Um, and whenever Snow White, you know, like throws her, like a, what was it, a piece of bread? <laughs> yeah. Um, she throws the apple in return. Also, um, just, just for clarification, the Sarevna, her name is, uh, Chernavka. Mm -hmm. Uh, the prince is named, uh. Yislevi or something? Yelisle, Yelisei? Yelisei? Yelisei. Yelise 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 Yelise. 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 That's it, yeah. I was like, it's something like that. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out that in the poem, the Sarina orders a servant girl to dress as a nun to feed mm. Chernavka the poisoned apple. Yeah, but this time she did it herself. Because... <laughs> I don't know if that was because they were influenced by Disney, but like... <laughs> Whenever the princess is led away, um, they have like a, a maid do that. Yes! Yes. I was going to tell you, like, how refreshing is it to have essentially a female huntsman? <laughs> yeah, um, but I mean, like, it's not like she's, like, meant to actively kill her. She's meant to just, like, leave her to the elements to die out there. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, you see the conflict of, like, she doesn't want to leave her. Yeah, it's really good animation. Yeah, but she's also under threat by the queen, so. <laughs> yeah. Can't really do that. <laughs> no. But, I mean, she does. She still does the whole thing where she like lies and is like, "Yeah, she's definitely dead." Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, they made a uh, Chernovka soprano. Yeah, I liked her voice. Yeah, I think she's more in Mary Costa territory than Adriana Casalotti. <laughs> yeah. I I did like the like little call and response thing that they did. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Because like, I mean, you could you could hear how like she got more panicked as whenever she didn't hear a reply. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was really cool. I liked that bit. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if I have too much else to say because it is very much like the Grimm's. <laughs> yeah. Just in, in uh, Russian dressing. But at least like <laughs> the queen just like fucking dies of shock. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. The fact That's that like, right. The people, like, like one of the ending lines is, like, the people went from her grave straight to the wedding. Yes! <laughs> because yes. Ulysse married her on the same day, and I'm like, that's so funny. <laughs> oh my god. That's one of the funniest <laughs> things I've ever heard. And then, um, I'm pretty sure the guys, like, at the end at the wedding were the brothers. So, I think they were informed that she was <laughs> alive. Okay. At least that's what yeah. I'm choosing to believe. Um, otherwise, I'm going to be really sad. Because, like, they really did take care of her. Yeah, I'm reading a synopsis of the poem, and it doesn't mention that they're notified. <laughs> yeah, but, like, in the animation, there were, like, guys that, like, looked like the brothers. <laughs> the... Which, I... I mean... Could or could not be them. <laughs> I mean, the prince kind of looked like them, too. He just had a, a shaved beard. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there was, like, a guy with, like, a really thick beard um, and, like, similar colored dress so yeah i'm like that's at least one of them <laughs> <laughs> that's the one that proposed marriage i'm pretty sure <laughs> and then was really chill about being let down it's like i support you i support you chanavka <laughs> i support you oh my gosh well um 
And let me see. Oh yeah, I guess um my other question, which we we kind of already talked about it, but I, I just want to address it formally this time. Which is like, why do we keep the seven dwarfs around as opposed to these robbers and knights? I don't know, man. Is it because of their disability? Is it due to them being fantasy creatures? Or is it just because they're European creations? I mean, I feel like it has to be because, like, I mean, the European the European version of Snow White is the one that really blew up, which is the... At least most of the versions had dwarves, which are fantasy creatures. So it just kind of became, like, ubiquitous at some point. And then all of the stuff with it, like, you know, being a disability kind of came after um, from, yeah. you know... You know, retrospect is always twenty twenty. so... Because, I mean, the best evidence that I've found is that... Well, first off, the seven thing, it comes from, like... I think it's a Christian belief that it's, like, seven represents wholeness or completeness. Mm-hmm. And then with them being dwarfs, it could be because their stature makes them less threatening to Snow White. Mm-hmm. That's true. As opposed to, like, you know, seven adult men. So, <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, there is this kind of thing where, like, usually if someone's shorter than you, there's the assumption that they can't, like, hurt you as bad. Yeah. Even though they have pickaxes. Yeah, even though they are men who work in a fucking diamond mine. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, I was just thinking about that because, you know, there was that controversy two years ago with, um, oh no, oh no, the guy from Game of Thrones. Uh, which one? The, the little man. Uh, the actor is Peter Dinklage. (laughs) Yes, yes, Peter Dinklage. He, he had that comment about like the the snow white remake that is unfortunately coming out next year Mm. um and he was talking about like why is disney making a story like this about like seven dwarfs living in a cave yeah and stuff and i'm like it's like i hate to be that guy but also like (laughs) i don't think he'd seen the movie recently to know that (laughs) they don't live in a cave they just work in one because they're But at the same time, I also see where he's coming from because, again, people with dwarfism are real. (laughs) Yes, yes, they are. Um, And they've always been subjected to unfair physical labor, um, especially in the United States um, with, like, freak shows and stuff like that. Um, So I can... I can see where the upset is, and I do kind of, I, 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 I agree with him to an extent where it's like, okay, guys, do we, do we really have to make them dwarves? Um, can we just, like, I don't know, do something new? <laughs> yeah. Maybe just don't remake the movie. You know? Like, yeah, it wasn't broken to begin with. Yeah, just, so. just don't remake the movie. It doesn't need it. No. Um, because yeah, I'm just I'm just on the side of like okay, they were all drawn with four with three fingers and a thumb, so like I don't I think they are meant to be fantasy creatures in the in the Disney version. Yes, but for um, some reason we have made we have assumed that they are supposed to be real little men. I mean, it's just. They made them look human. That's the problem. In in the in the animated movie, they look human enough. You know, because like they have they have the these fact human that they look faces. more human than Snow White. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they really do. Um, and that's that's part of it. Where like they didn't make it obvious that these were the fantasy creatures. They made them just look like small people. Then I don't know, honestly. <laughs> like, I, I see your point, but, like... You know, it might also just be, like, a systematic problem, where it's like, 
Snow White and the Wizard of Oz are probably like, well, prior to The Greatest Showman, those were probably like the two biggest movies featuring little people. Yeah. That that like most like people would recognize. And like, I, I've heard that some little people have had to deal with people making like hi-ho jokes and like <laughs> things yeah. like that. But... I, I mean, the I, Wizard of Oz, um, with like in regards to the um, the little people that were involved. Oh, and in uh, that. Willy Wonka, yeah, yeah, and Willy Wonka. Um, at least in regards to Wizard of Oz, I know the people involved in that movie had positive experiences. Yes, um, simply yes. because they got to know their community. Um, because yeah. this was like the first kind of film that like let them meet other people like them. Um, and then also be involved in something other than a freak show or like, you know, actually get to be in a movie. Um, yeah. and they were coming from all over the world, but mostly yeah. Europe. So mostly Europe, but they still, you know, got to connect. And I mean, um, you know, that's awesome. Um, yeah. but there is still like the problem of where like, they're still unfairly treated. Um, yes because people look down on them and i mean people still like and people treat them like children even though they are adults <laughs> yes yes at least the ones that are adults i know that there are people with dwarfism who are children but <laughs> yes <laughs> um yes. but you know the ones that we actually like usually see are adults so it's just like it is a systematic problem where yeah there's just a lot of unfair treatment and um, we're just not at the place societally um, to be doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think maybe that's where I'm at. It's like, because, because I am aware and because I take it seriously, it's like, I don't feel offended by Snow White, mm. but the rest of the, the population might still have some work to do. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's where it is. Um, but uh, yeah. Okay. So going to get to our two final questions. First one. Um, what do you think is the moral of Snow White? Um, have good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> have good vibes and life will treat you good. <laughs> I mean, basically, like, have good vibes and then you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Something knocks you down, you'll get back up eventually. <laughs> Just whistle while you work, bitch. <laughs> whistle while you work. Um... I mean, kind of. I mean, I'm I'm joking, but like, kind I of. Know, yeah, I think yeah, that I is know. actually what it is, um, just because, like, I mean, majority of the Snow White versions, where you know, she gets, you know, deaded, um, <laughs> <laughs> she eventually gets back up, um, and I believe it's because, like, you know, she was a good and unproblematic person mm -hmm. before that, um, and she always had been. Um, not necessarily because of her I mean part of it's because of her beauty but I also think part of it is just because like she's just a nice person yeah Um, like so nice to the point where people like resisted orders from the queen to like you know not kill her Um, and then also like you know she cleaned up this house that she didn't know who lived in it um, just because like she wanted to um and I, I feel like that's 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 the moral. Just just you know, if you're a good person, then good things will come back around to you. Mm hmm. At least kindness, yeah. 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 And actually, if I could elaborate on that just a little bit more, it's like I I was paying attention to the Disney version a couple months ago because I was like, okay, who values Snow White's beauty? like her physical beauty and who values her inner beauty. Mm -hmm. And from what I could catch, I think 
the prince and the queen are interested in her outer beauty. Mm -hmm. The huntsman is invested in her inner beauty. Mm -hmm. So are the animals. Um, but the dwarfs, they kind of get in the middle ground. <laughs> yeah, it seems like they're like both. Yeah. Because their first remarks to her about are, are about how pretty she is, and she's almost like angelic. Mm -hmm. But like, then they get to know her like as a person. Um, so I'm just thinking like, maybe focus on your inner beauty because the outer beauty will fade mm -hmm. <laughs> or you can hope that it turns into something better as you mature <laughs> hey some people age like fine wine that's just a fact mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. people age like milk but that's okay as long yeah. as you're beautiful on the inside that's all that matters yes and, like, uh, if I may add a bit of levity, um, you could be, like, so freaking boring when you're young and then really, really, like, mesmerizing when you're in your, like, 60s or something. Yeah, I'm sure you'll have fun stories to tell. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is how it works. Yeah. yeah, I mean, why do you think we go after silver daddies? For real. <laughs> And that's the moral of Snow White. <laughs> Go after hot dilfs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. But um, because none of these films are produced by the Walt Disney Studios, my final question shall be, why haven't they produced a fairy tale film based on these pieces of folklore? Um, I mean, Richelda, that already gets ruled out because of how religious it is. Yeah, it's it's very religious. Um, with um, what was it? The Beautiful Daughter. Yes. Yeah. Um, with the Beautiful Daughter. Um, I mean, Hollywood is notorious for not wanting to do anything involving <laughs> african stuff um just because... definitely not like pre-slavery yeah um and honestly i wouldn't really want them to because they would probably portray it horribly yeah. um because like i swear nobody knows how africa actually is and it's like they live like normal people <laughs> they are normal people just like us but people always like assume that africa is still full of like or like africa is full of savage people and it's like no <laughs> mm -hmm. they're literally normal people um yeah. but that's what people think of when they think of africa um, Which also, and, like, isn't it a problem that The Lion King is the only, like, explicitly African Disney movie? And, and it's they about went animals. With animals. <laughs> yeah. And it's about animals. Like, that is kind of a problem. <laughs> yeah. That's a huge problem. Um, but yeah. Um, that rules out, you know, <laughs> the really Christian one and the African one. Um, and then with the Russian one. Um, I mean, it was, people still don't like the red. <laughs> yeah. People still don't like seeing Russian stuff in media. I mean, hey, Putin is giving us good reasons enough, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean it more so in like the, I mean, even in the times before Putin. Or like, yes, yes, yes. There was the Cold War. So mm -hmm. people, I mean, people were very distrusting of Russia, um, slash the Soviet Union. Um. And then, of course, Putin came in, and <laughs> people still don't trust Russia. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's just getting worse. So, like, it, it doesn't necessarily surprise me that the only place that made, you know, a Russian version of Snow White is the Soviet Union. Because it's the only place that would have made that kind of thing. Because everywhere else was just so not wanting Russian media mm -hmm. that, like, that's the only place it would have been made. Yeah. And also to put that in perspective, 
Disney Snow White was not shown in Russia until 1955. Mm -hmm. So that's like four years after this one. So this would have been the only animated Snow White that Russians would have known. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Because Walt learned to get over the commies. (laughs) Not a, not a bad version because it was like, it was, it was, it's a good 30 minutes. I enjoyed it. I enjoy. I enjoyed those thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. And maybe, uh, yeah, on a side of like, maybe Disney can be a bit of an imperialist stomach sometimes when it comes to like a bit American products. <laughs> a bit. That feels like an understatement. Oh my god! Are you ready to go off again? <laughs> no, I won't go on an anti-capitalist rant yet. But mm, <laughs> maybe some other time. Okay. <laughs> I'm too tired. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I get you. Um, but yeah. Um, I guess that concludes this chapter on Disney Real to Real. Yeah. Are we feeling good? We're feeling good. Okay. Shall we go for it? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Thou art slaying. Thou art slaying. I love it. Thou shalt be queen of them all. You win. You, thou thou winneth thine twenty five thousand francs. Thou shalt sashay, sashay away. Sashay away. <laughs> Oh. oh man. Yeah. But yeah. If anything if anything this just makes me a bit more apprehensive about when we finally get to that Snow White series. <laughs> It'll be a trip. It'll be a trip and I hope that we'll have about as much like we'll have an even amount of commentary to share with each other. <laughs> or, or at least our evidence or yeah. our research will be interesting enough. But until then, <laughs> Y'all can reach out to us at DisneyReelToReel at gmail.com or on Instagram at DisReelToReelPodcast. You can also reach us uh, um, on Tumblr at DisReelToReel-Official. Does it also have the .tumblr.com? Yes, .tumblr.com. Okay. <laughs> I just appreciate the, <laughs> the, the, uh, the precision, I guess. Okay. I know. I'm just weird like that. It's a weird day, you guys. It's okay. Yeah. It is a weird day. I mean, it's like re- it's like weirdly dreary outside. Yeah. When we just f- had a hailstorm two days yes. ago, but yeah. yeah. You had a hailstorm. I had a really bad thunderstorm. <laughs> yeah. And then there was a tornado in Greenwood. <laughs> yeah, and then I had to save a dog from getting run over two days earlier. <laughs> and then, like for like the past like. Or like a couple weeks ago, there was like the Canadian fires that made the air quality horrible. Yeah, oh it, my it was god. looking like Silent Hill up in here. It I know. Like... Oh my god. <laughs> I was literally driving to work, and I was like, "Why is it so foggy?" <laughs> but then, like, I got to work, and my friend texted me and was like, "How is it outside?" And I'm like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> and they're like, "The Canadian fires," and I'm like, "The what?" <laughs> the what? <laughs> Yeah. What did you do to my drink? I, 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 you what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's been an, it's been an interesting few weeks. Yes. <laughs> this summer. Yes. Yes. It's been an interesting summer. Yeah. So hopefully, by the time we meet up to rank the Disney Renaissance movies, things will be a little okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hopefully we will stop going through multiple national uh, like natural disasters. Yes. <laughs> uh in the name of Tornado Alley. Oh my god. Uh, at least most tornadoes don't touch down inside 465. That is that is true. So That's true. 465 should act as a, a holy ward to keep <laughs> tornadoes away from us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! All right. Well, all right. Yes. Until next time. Have a magical day, everybody. 
Bye.